I'm Trevor Hodgkin, right. born in Birmingham, September the 4th, 1930, in, at Edgebaston, uh, Birmingham, which was um, where, where we, my mom was living at that time, was uh, Neville Chamberlain's estate in a cottage there of some sort. And um, <clears throat> that's all I know of that. Um, I was um, went to school when I was about four till I was five at Triddleford Road School. Um, and it was quite funny because um, we came on holiday to Jersey and the kiddies there all were pulling my leg about coming to live in my Jersey. Uh, I can remember that, sounds silly. Um, Did you have any relatives in Jersey then? Did you have anybody here that you knew? Pardon? Did you have relatives in Jersey then? Or oh, yes. Um, well, when we came to we came on holiday to Jersey, my mom, myself, and my sister, and we walked from the boat. Uh, we, we weren't the type of people that would take a taxi. So we walked from the uh, harbour to the to very top of Halcombe Place, Jersey, uh, next door to the, um, the Methodist Church there, Auntie Bella, Bella La Mouton. And um, it was a long walk, I can remember it, because uh, I was carrying one of the bags, or whatever it was, something in Sophia. Um, so uh, I went from um, Auntie Bella's, my mom saw that a lot of the motor cars in Jersey and the coaches were very badly uh, looked after. All the body panels were 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 um, damaged and that. A lot of damage on the cars. So, and she thought, oh, that's a big opening for Tom. So when she went back to Birmingham, she convinced my dad to um, come to Jersey and start a business. Well, he bought some machines in Birmingham, a wheeling machine and a set of rolls and uh, a few odd tools and that, and um, came to Jersey, and that would have been in 1935. We lived in a flat above um, a Miller's Chemist in those days, and it, it was, in those days it was called the Lighthouse for some reason, but they had a de copy of the Demi de Par Lighthouse, a model of it, um, which was about 10 feet tall, uh, but that ended up on the roof of the Miller's Chemist. Um, that <clears throat> um, we only stayed there a very short bit at time because it was right up in the attic. And during that time, I, I ended up with measles, so I can remember that as well. And um, Tell me something, because of my particular interest, did you need housing quals to move in? Did you just take a flat? We just took a flat, yes. There was no qualies or anything like that. You just came to Jersey, and that's what I presume um, happened because um, uh, we just came. We've we got these um, lived in this attic above Miller's the chemist, and then uh, she, she uh, my mum got in touch with Godin's, and f for many many years. She was on a friendly terms with Godin's, the um, estate agents. And we got a house in um, a Victoria Park Terrace. And it was a quite nice house. We must have moved there in 1936. Um, my dad's workshop was in Elizabeth Street. Um, and it was a part of a coal store which belonged to Tangy's, the um, milk people, Cyril Tangy. And it was um, only just an open area. But Dad got a lot of work from uh, the safety coach, which was known as SES. Oh, just, just so people understand, your dad was a skilled panel beater. Oh, my dad was a very, very skilled panel beater. He, uh, his training uh, was, um, first of all, on radiators in Croydon. And then, then he was um, became a panel beater somehow or other 
worked and um, moved up to Birmingham. And he's what would one would call a true journeyman. The words journeyman meaning that uh, he would go from job to job. He used to go from Birmingham to Gloucester Wagon and Carriage uh, when they were ready. And he would do the domes on the end of the railway lo- um, uh, carriages. And he'd do them and... Um, then he would go back home once he'd finished the job. And one of the things that I remember, and he always told the story, he always, uh, a panel beater has got what they call dollies, and dollies and hammers, and they're always uh, shaped, various shapes, but they're very heavy. And um, my dad had a little briefcase, uh, which he kept his dollies and his hammers in, uh, that was a punishing hammer and a stretching hammer and that, that sort of thing. And the, the the guy that he that he took with him as an assistant was rather upper market, and he liked to stay in decent hotels. So they went to a particular hotel, and the flunky on the door grabbed hold of my dad's um, little attaché case, expecting it being full of papers. <laughs> he did a did a <laughs> fell over the steps almost of the, of the hotel. Curious, your dad, obviously, he could make a living traveling around, staying in hotels, just doing panel work. Yeah, just doing panel work. Yeah. Uh, he, he worked also, he worked at the um, Austin Experimental uh, for many, I think, for quite a few years there. Um, where he made all the prototypes for the for the Austins and the Austin Ten and the Austin, all those early ones in nineteen from nineteen between nineteen twenty eight and um, and about nineteen thirty two I think well I just anywhere I think he was in and out of there was a period uh, during the depression where he wasn't working but. Um, Sir Herbert Austin used to come and sit on a, a box and just look at the cars, what, you know, look at the design of what they were doing and creating um, shapes and that, you know, telling telling people like my dad what what he wanted. <clears throat> so that was, we, better, we better get back. You've arrived in Jersey. You're a little... We arrived in, we arrived in Jersey and... Uh, in 1935, and um, that we, we had the started the uh, first of all in Elizabeth Street, um, and there was an oil store there as well, a castrol store. Um, there was the coal um, was part of Tangy's coal store, and it's really where the co-op is now in um, in Elizabeth Street. That was where the first workshop was. Then, um, f- then we m- moved, as I said, to Victoria Park Terrace, and we moved. Uh, Dad moved the workshop because it wasn't very really good. He couldn't lock anything up in uh, in Elizabeth Street, and he got a, a workshop in Bago Road. And the one in Bago Road was opposite Renoff's the uh, shop. The shop's still there, um, just uh, prior to uh, Belvedere Hill. And it was a that um, workshop was really an old um, tomato shed, uh, you know, greenhouse. It was all glass all down the one side, about 30 foot wide, um, and about 100, 120 feet long. As far as you can remember, what sort of work was he getting then? What sort well, of- he was getting car repairs, you know, coaches. He would go like to the safety coach or to the JMT and work on their buses there, mm. you know, uh, or or do the panels. He used to do also hearses, like for pictures. He would um, do the body on a on a hearse. They bring the timber frame of the hearse in, and then my dad would make the wings and the mud guards or wings that they stretched from the rear wheels in one piece, right the way through to the nose of the car, all in one piece. And he used to do that in aluminium. He was a, 
a wonderful welder of aluminium, um, and he could weld aluminium uh, in those days using oxyacetylene, and it was not it wasn't easy. And um, so all the pictures, all the pictures about you. But tell us about your mum. What was your mum doing, bringing up? Oh, she would like do you. all the books. My mum, my mum was the one that was the driving force, really. She, she, um, she, she did all the paperwork and uh, whatever there was. My dad wasn't very good on paperwork. She didn't go out to work. Eh? She didn't need to go out to work. Oh no, she never went, and she looked after us kids and how did all the paperwork. How many kids were there by then? Pardon? How many children were there? Oh, there was just my sister and I, that's Shirley um, and I. And um, uh, Shirley was three years younger than me. And um, <clears throat> she eventually married Ivor Lehman. And, um, but the, the where, workshop... did you, where did you go to school? Where were you going to school? Now, at that time, I was going to, I went to, I started school at St. Luke's. And in the and um, it was a wonderful school actually for swimming, and the only um, uh, certificate I have, is, don't laugh at this. I had it in my office in Bulawayo, uh, hanging on the wall, was to be able to swim twenty five yards. <clears throat> That's the only the only um, uh, certificate I've ever had in my life uh, of any consequence. And um, the t teacher there that was um, uh, at, at Jock Andrews, and he's got a history in Jersey. And um, but um, then from St. Luke's, I went to St. Clair. When we when we moved from uh, Victoria Park Terrace to the Deans, I went to St. Clement's School for a while, and um, uh, then eventually I went back to. Uh, so I was at St. Luke's, and they they put the, the Germans. Um, you hang on, you're jumping a bit now. We're, the Germans uh, haven't arrived yet. Don't tell us about the Germans yet. No, no. I want to know about this school. Well, when you were St. School, Luke's school. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. When you were at school, were you with pupils who spoke Jerrie? Did anybody speak Jerrie? No. no. They were no. all English. Uh, at St. Luke's, they were all English speaking. All English speaking. Well, to my knowledge, I never, nobody ever spoke Jersey. When you French. arrived in Jersey in your first few years before the war, were many people speaking Jersey? Not to my knowledge. Um, well, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't even notice anyone speaking Jersey at all. Um, the teachers, uh, some of them were, were French. There was a Mr. Few, uh, um, um, Mr. Vezier, uh, Miss Cadu, and they could have all been uh, farming families, um, and they possibly could speak Jersey French. But um, uh, to my knowledge, I don't know of any. These schools, did you have to wear a uniform to go to school then, or do you wear what you want? You remember? I at that time at St Luke's and that we we all all the kids boys wore short pants and um, socks shoes um, and I think there was n not a uniform as such but we we all were dressed reasonably smart. Um, thinking back, yes, we 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 were. We were Fairly smart. My mom dressed us very, very well, actually. Right. Was that true of all, as far as you can remember, I know it's a long time ago, but generally speaking, was there much poverty? Was there much poverty then? Were you aware of it? Well, I, I was never aware of it, but, you know, we, at school, we, um, I can remember we had a collection for something or other, and I wanted to increase the amount of money that we gave. And it was only pennies, uh, but um, uh, there must have been other people that were worse off than me. But no, that didn't, that didn't appear. To me, I didn't notice any poverty as such.
Did they do no. school dinners? Did you have a school dinner or did you take a sandwich or what was the, what was the arrangement then? Um, no, I can't remember. I, I think I would have taken uh, something to school, but we used to get milk in those days at school. We got a, like a little half pint bottle of milk and that was given to all the children in the Jersey schools. Did you enjoy school? Was it any uh, an activity you enjoyed? Well, I enjoyed reading. I, I, do you know, one of the blessings uh, of my life has been that I was, was very early, I was able to read. And I think that is a very, very important part of everybody's life, is to be able to read and read, um, you know, books. I can remember I had a book called Power and Speed, and that was my, I got it for Christmas. And I had it, to, and I took it to Zoom with me. Um, and I, it was one of my, it was a wonderful book because it had, it was a pre-war book, um, I suppose printed in 1938, 39. And it had the uh, Morris, um, the way it was built in in um, there and at all racing cars. All Somewhere in my filing system, I've still got a copy of that book. Have you? Yeah, somewhere. I don't know. I haven't seen it for ages, but it's here somewhere. I know, it's, it's a wonderful filed, book. It's filed under racing cars or something. I don't know what it's filed under. Yeah. But it was. And the illustrations, they used to do these extraordinary cutaway drawings and things, a bit like they used to do in Dan Darebot. But they yeah, were brilliant. Yeah. They were brilliant drawings, weren't they? Well, yeah, yeah. There was the Spitfire in there as well, I think. The Spitfire was in there and yeah. uh, broken down as well. That's if right. I remember rightly, <clears throat> but it was a fabulous book. It was, wasn't it? And it was one that I that, that I used to read and read and read and study, um, awful an awful lot. Well, after we uh, we opened the garage at um, Mr. Polo of um, where where Trevor's the hairdresser is now. Um, Mr. Mr. Polo had a workshop uh, behind uh, Jersey Motor Panels, and um, he got a big lathe in there. He used to work for uh, the railways in Jersey, and um, and I think most a lot of the engineers in Jersey all worked for the railways at that time. Um, you know, they we had steam locos must have had in Jersey, and so there was always call for engineers to do repairs and maintenance, boilers. Was that Don Polo? Was that Don Polo? No, uh, well, Don Polo was another engineer. It was the same family. Different, uh, different Polo. Yeah, right. uh, This was Harold Polo. Oh, was it Harold? Yeah, they would have been about the same age as Don Polo. And um, uh, he, he got himself into trouble. Uh, on t he was a very quiet man. And we're, we're next door to the workshop between his place and the house. Um, he's got an orchard and full of, not that very often I went into it, but there was access to it. Um, my dad didn't let me sort of wander into Harold Pollo's um, uh, private privacy in any way at all. But from the, the house, we moved from um, Victoria Park Terrace to the Deans at Grève de Zet. Now, how we got that house, it was a brand new house. Um, it belonged to Harold Le Sailor. And Harold Le Sailor and my dad were quite friendly because uh, my dad used to do work for him. And he, if my dad needed coach work done, timber, he would go to Harold Le Sailor because he got the uh, good machines, spindle molders and all that to create timber frames uh, and all that sort of thing so that my dad could build the bodies on. And, um, of course, they were very heavy in those days. When when my dad built a racing car, it had got a w heavy wooden frame, um, and then the panels went on to top of that. Uh, but, it, but it was it, the, the – today, it's the extreme is how to get it so – to get everything so light. Um, Just a little, I must keep stopping you because you're describing a part of St. Clement 
which I presume is very different today. But lots of these places which you talk about are still there. Now, <laughs> when you were saying you were staying at the Deans and so on, around there, what was around there? Was that still a well, marsh? It, was it farmland? What was it? Well, no, <laughs> Grave Gazette. The Holy Grave Gazette is qu was called... You're disappearing off the picture. You're going off the picture. Oh, I just moved it. Yeah, sorry. Um... Uh, Grave Gazette was known as Kafferland. Um, why it was called that, I don't know. But I've always put it down to the fact that when we arrived in 1940 to uh, the Deans, um, the, the house across the road used to be uh, huts, and a lot of Jersey people lived in those huts but they were in the process of knocking them all down. And that land became uh, um, uh, plots to grow vegetables. Um, what do you call it? Um, small holdings, or is it like... Small holdings. Yeah, they were little with so many vergies right. uh, around to, and people could take it off the states. Oh, more like allotments, more like allotments. Allotments, yes, that was the word I was looking for, allotments. And, um, but one of the reasons uh, I think that the name Kafferland was there was that those hats, I, and we haven't been able to find out through history, but I, down the road, was a lady who wore a long skirt, and today... I would describe her possibly as a coloured lady, um, and she came from from Africa, and uh, the kids always used to shout after her, you know, the, what kids are like, the small kids, because she wore long, long dresses. Um, but I, pre and many, many years later, uh, I remembered a conversation that I had with her in about 1942, in which she said, the kids here think that I'm a Boer. And she says, I'm not a Boer, I'm an Africana. Oh. But it took me 20 years to remember that conversation again. And when I think of that conversation... You're moving the picture again. Right? Yeah, yeah. When I think of um, that good lady again, I realise what she meant. But it took me a long time to find to really um, uh, understand what she said. She was an Afrikaner is a Dutch person. Now, there's Dutch a sea, there's a sea wall now protecting us from the monster sea. Was there a sea wall then? Oh what yeah, you? well, I mean, it, it's exactly the same as it exactly. is now, right, okay. except that they have altered the steps down to the beach. But what? <clears throat> um, the, the, all that area, um, Kingsley, uh, Kingsley Avenue um, and um, St. Nicholas Avenue, the church, everything was as it is now. And um, there was, a, but the, where the uh, plots were, the allotments, is now um, a housing estate. Um, and the housing estate is between um, FB cottages and where I'm sitting now in the avenue. Um, Do you remember, I don't know, you were very young at the time, but a lot of those houses are 1930s houses. All of them are 1930s. And of course, they followed the coast, as they always did, south facing, the peach of a sight. Do you know who built them? Who was it? Private builders? Was it speculative? No, no. I, I have no. At Grave Desert, um, uh, all coastlands. Um, I don't know who built those. Those must have been built in nineteen uh, nineteen thirty two. Um, on the coast side, um, the, I, they're all were fishermen's cottages. Um, Seymour had a, a little cottage down there. Duncan Seymour had a little cottage down there. And there was Pop Saunders. Um, he was a local fisherman and used to gather rack on the beach. 
They, he had a little cottage there. Then there was Millard's Corner, and which was the but post you say, office. When you say fishermen's cottages, were they really fishermen, or was it just cottages that looked like fishermen's cottages? Were they really? Well, they originally they would have been like fishermen's cottages or like fishermen's cottages, but they were fishermen that stayed there. Um, I mean, Pop Saunders in particular, um, and there were all there, there's some still there now. Um, Mr. Besson had the little shop there, <clears throat> um, and that goes back a long, long time. And um, all of, there are lots of little sort of pondukis, um, shops. Up where the co op is, the house next door that's still got the name Besson on the door knocker. Now, he was a shoemaker or something. Do you remember that guy? You mean on the road? Where the co-op is now, the one, yeah, down the road, uh, just there. That little yeah, cobbler there. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, piece of the cobbler uh, was um, Pimper, is, um, it was Kathleen, the kiddies were Kathleen Bisson, really? um, uh, Pimple Bisson, there were two boys, Pimple, and um, I know that's not their real names, but they were footballers and they were all St. Luke's. A little bit older than me, Kathleen. Off the screen again. Adjust your screen. You're, you're losing your face off the screen. You're losing your face off the screen. Just adjust the screen. A little bit. Sorry, what was that? We're losing your face off the screen. Oh, so, I must have moved. Keep moving. Yeah, sorry. I have to put a book there. That's better. Okay, a bit more. A bit, bit higher. Right, leave it. That's it. Perfect. Right. Sit, alone. Sit on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're saying uh, the Bisons, Pimple Bison. Yeah. Well, there was uh, uh, running on Don Road. The, uh, describe, uh, I can describe Don Road for you. Um, coming down was Mr. Warren, the uh, book, um, the news agent. Originally in 1935, he was on the other side of the road, mm -hmm. um, Merton side, and under a tree. And it was like a cave in those days. It, it was, um, and uh, that was the news agent was Warren's. Then he moved across the road. Well, I'm going to stop you again. You say news agent. Do you yeah. remember what newspapers were they selling then? Obviously, was there, there's a the English Jersey newspaper and the Evening Post. Evening Post. But were there any other Jersey newspapers? Um, well, there was the Morning News. Morning News, right. And who yeah. used to read that? Who read the morning news? Well, I suppose everybody who, who got the money to buy it. Right. Um, uh, we had the two newspapers at one time. But um, Warren's, um, he moved across the road. It's the, um, not the big house, but the first house um, after a big house on the corner of Elizabeth Street, he was in a, he had a little place there. 